Hey folks, this is Shane from Forum TV. Welcome to the channel. Today's video, we're going to start figuring out how we're actually going to fit this motor in the Porsche. Hey folks, thanks for watching. In today's video, we're going to take a bit more of a look at the specifics of the motor that I've got beside me here. Uh, taking some dimensions, looking at the orientation of it, where things like the drive shafts come out. And then we're going to take a look at the Porsche itself, uh, figure out where things are in that and what space we've got to work with and start thinking about how we're actually going to mount this in the car. Um, I have a vague idea of where it's going to go, but I need to start looking at it more specifically now. So yeah, come and join us um, as we start taking a look into this. All right, we're down here underneath the Porsche, uh, trying to get some measurements just so I can start figuring out how the leaf motor is going to fit while we're still working on getting it up and running. So we've got our rather filthy engine here. So plenty of space in this area for a probably battery pack fit nicely. We've got lots and lots of space. Then behind the engine where the motor is ultimately going to go because we're going to use it with the gear with the gear reduction gear so direct drive is the transmission. So the leaf motor is quite a bit smaller than that so we should be able to, uh, to get it to fit. Uh, I want to put the drive unit back together so that's motor and uh, reduction gear plus mounts and just see where where things end up figure out which bits we're going to be able to use which bits we won't um, so yeah let's see how we get on rather crude diagram but as you can see here the dimensions including the um, mounting points actually make the motor quite wide um, the orientation of this particular diagram is to the left is would be the front of the car um, and top to bottom is basically the width so with 
the Porsche, because of the construction of the body, um, there are certain frame rails and that that come out um, into the space that the transmission takes up to uh, provide the necessary support for things like the transmission, the suspension, the engine, and that means that the there's actually only a limited width to actually play with. Fortunately, once we remove those mounting points, as you can see from this diagram, the um, space actually lines up quite nicely with probably a few centimetres leeway on each side um, and then quite a bit of space forward and backwards um, to be able to move it. Um, so that will give us something to play with and we'll start to build out the frame both around the motor and within the car uh, to be able to mount all this and then ultimately all the other ancillary components like the inverter and the battery um, cells as well as any other things like junction boxes and that sort of thing that we'll need to build out when we get to that stage. So the space we've got these engine mounts aren't going to be a practical option so we'll have to build something that connects directly to um, the motor and gearbox themselves rather than bolting onto the, bolting onto the mounts. Um, so next step we're going to move the mounts and start to figure out what um, shape of custom mount we'll need to do. That's our standard Nissan motor mounts removed. Um, what I'm thinking is probably flat plate bolted on here that then rests onto a, a frame that will then bolt into the um, into the Porsche. At a very basic level this is kind of what I'm thinking mocked up in wood. Um, I know I could have gone on and tried to do it on a computer but to be honest can, CAD is not a skill I ever managed to really properly master. Um, plus I've been spending too much time in front of a computer screen recently and this was a bit of fun. Um, so this will give me some something to measure against and also once the um, engine and transmission are out of the port I'll be able to use it just to very quickly verify how far out I am before I start going cutting metal and bolting or welding it together. Um, so now I'm going to take some measurements from this and work out what I need to buy uh, in order to build this frame out of metal. So that's given us a lot of information to go off of. Um, now that we know an idea of the dimensions, as I say I'm going to build a bit of a frame that I can bolt onto the motor and that will then give me a range of different mounting points for attaching this unit into 
another frame that I'm going to have to build in the car, which will go between the mounting points for things like the engine and the transmission. Um, and that, that is going to be a bit of trial and error to try and get those to fit so that things like the um, drive shafts are in the right uh, position, both horizontally and vertically, uh, to hook up to the, the axles. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's the kind of first step in a, a process that we'll go into in a, a fair bit of detail over the next few videos. If you have, please, um, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Um, click you know the, the like icon if, if you've liked what I've seen. If you've got any comments, please do feel free to, to leave them. Um, all this interaction really helps me. It helps the videos get promoted better. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.